Hi, I'm Kristen Namdahl. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make the easy breezy crochet shawl pattern, but work it in number five bulky weight yarn. I'll be using Mandela watercolors yarn in color ice grape, and I will be using an L11 or eight millimeter crochet hook, yarn needle and scissors. Let's get started. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make the easy breezy crochet shawl using two balls of Mandela watercolor number five bulky weight yarn and a size L11 or eight millimeter crochet hook. If you would like to see this shawl worked up in different weights of yarn and or with beads, there are links in the video description to other video tutorials showing how to make this shawl in various different weights of yarn. Check out the video description below where you can find a link to download this pattern as well as find out when the crochet along happens every Tuesday this summer. We're going to start by tying our yarn to our crochet hook. You can use a square knot, a slip knot, whichever works best for you. And then we chain five. And slip stitch to the fifth chain from your hook to form a ring. Row one begins with a chain three. That chain three counts as our first double crochet. Then we're going to work a double crochet in the chain five ring. Double crochet is yarn over your hook. Insert your hook in the ring, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through two loops on your hook. Let's do that again. Yarn over, insert your hook in the ring, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through two loops on your hook chain one, then three more double crochets in the ring. Chain three. If you like this video, subscribe to my channel so you'll be first to know when I release a new video as well. And three more double crochets in the ring. Chain one. And three more double crochets in the ring. And this is what your work should look like at the end of row one. Row two begins with a chain six. The chain, the first three chains of the chain six counts as a double crochet and the second three chains count as a chain three space and turn our work. Skip the first three double crochets and work three double crochets in this chain one space. chain one. Then in this chain three space, we'll work three double crochet, chain three, three double crochet. chain one. In the next chain one space, we're going to work three double crochets. Chain three. Skip two double crochets and in this last double crochet, which was a chain three that counted as a double crochet, we're going to work one double crochet and we're going to work it into that top chain of the chain three.
And this is what your work should look like at the end of row two. Row three begins with a chain six that counts as a double crochet chain three. Turn your work. In that first chain three space, work three double crochets. Chain one, skip the next three double crochets. In the next chain one space, work three double crochets. Chain one, skip the next three double crochets. In the next chain three space, work three double crochet, chain three, three double crochet. Chain one, skip the next three double crochets in the next chain one space, work three double crochets. Chain one, in the next chain three space, work three double crochets. Chain three, then double crochet in the double crochet portion of that chain six. Remember the first three chains were a double crochet and the second three counted as a chain three space. We're going to count up one, two, three to the third chain of the first three chains and that's the double crochet portion of it. So we'll insert our crochet hook there to work our last double crochet. And this is what your work should look like at the end of row three. Row four is a repeat of row two with additional increases and each row going forward is going to be a repeat. So this is a one row repeating pattern which is great for memorizing and making it a super relaxing project but I'll show you the next couple rows so that you can see the established pattern that we're working with. All right so the next row begins with a chain six which counts as a double crochet chain three. Turn our work in the first chain three space work three double crochets. And our repeat to the next corner is going to be chain one, three double crochets in the next chain one space. So on previous row, we did it one time. On this row, we're gonna do it twice. And each row going forward, we'll do it an additional time. So it's going to be chain one, three doubles, chain one, three doubles. Let's do that. chain one and then in the chain three corner space here we're going to work three double crochet chain three three double crochet
then it's chain one and three double crochets in the next chain one space times two. Chain one, three double crochets in the last chain three space. Chain three and double crochet in the third chain of that beginning chain six. And this is what your work should look like at the end of row four. Row five begins with chain six. Chain six counts as a double crochet in a chain three. Turn our work. Three double crochets in the first chain three space. Then it's chain one, three double crochets in the next chain one space, once, twice, and three times. We're gonna repeat that three times on this row. Chain one, three double crochets in the next chain one space, times three. chain one, then in the next chain three space, work three double crochet, chain three, three double crochet. Then it's chain one, three double crochet in the next chain one space, times three. chain one, and in the next chain three space, three double crochets. Chain three, and double crochet in the third chain of the beginning chain six. And this is what your work will look like at the end of row five. You wanna continue in this established pattern for the desired length of your shawl. This is a top-down increasing shawl, so you can make it as large or as small as you want. 
by deciding how many rows you wish to add to make the shawl whatever size that you want. If you're making it larger than one ball, the next thing you'll need to learn is how to add a second ball of yarn. Okay, I continued working more rows on this shawl and I'm now up to 14 rows and I've run out of yarn for my first ball of yarn. Um, the shawl is not the size I want it to be yet and I'm in the middle of a row. So it's really important now that I'm able to add a second ball of yarn. So what I wanna do is back my work out a little bit so that I have a sufficient tail to be able to weave in the loose ends as well. And I'll place my crochet hook on the working loop just so it doesn't unravel as I'm working. I'm gonna take these two tails, the end piece from the first ball and the beginning piece from the second ball. And what I like to do is just tie them together, work a couple more stitches. So I'm gonna work up to the knot and skip the knot, pretend like it's not even there and just work with the new yarn and avoid those two tails. So I like grab them with my pinky finger to just get them out of the way. And once I work a couple of stitches from the new ball of yarn, then I can go back and weave in those tails. You could save it till the end and weave in all your ends at the same time, or you can choose to weave them in now. Weaving in ends is something that I really like to do as soon as possible, simply because once you cut a yarn, the yarn has the ability to fray then, and the more friction that it goes through from just working with it, storing it, putting it in your bag, pulling it back out, every little bit is going to help that yarn fray further. So the quickest and easiest time to weave in ends is right after the yarn is cut, and that cut is fresh. So I'm going to take my yarn and thread it through my needle. This is a wide eye yarn needle, and so I'm going to thread it through. I'll show you what to do on the next tail if you have trouble doing this, but let's weave in this one first, and I'm gonna work back and forth inside my stitches, making sure that I work back and forth in a minimum of three directions, and I wanna do it for several inches. The more time and patience you take weaving in your ends at this point has a lot to do with how long those ends are gonna stay woven in. The shawl is going to get worn, hopefully for many years. It's going to get washed multiple times. You wanna make sure that those ends are sufficiently woven in so that anybody that has this, whether you give it as a gift or you give it as a charity donation or even keep it for yourself, you wanna make sure those ends are sufficiently woven in so that they don't come back out. Okay, once you think the tail is sufficiently woven in, you can just cut it right at the surface. Okay. Here's the second tail. Let's say that we're having trouble weaving in this tail, right? Let's say, let's say that this doesn't wanna go through. We're just gonna pretend. So what I like to do at that point is bend the yarn in half like this, pinch it in my non-dominant hand so that I can then take that pinched folded yarn and push it through the yarn needle. And this works almost every single time, okay? And then we can go back and weave in our ends. Now this is a bulky yarn. Every yarn weight has different nuances for weaving in ends. The thinner the yarns, the harder it is to hide them in the stitches. And the thicker the yarn, the easier it is to weave them in and out of the stitches, but it is also easier to see them as well. So I wanna make sure that I'm not weaving this tail over the exact same spot that I wove the last tail, because it will probably add a little too much bulk to the visual fabric. What I'm gonna do just like I did with the other one, weave back and forth in multiple directions. Minimum of three directions is what I like to go for. Take my time and do a good job. Okay. And then we can come back to our project and continue working in our established pattern and make sure you crochet as many rows as you like for the exact size shawl that you want. And then I will show you how to work the edging. The great thing about this edging is that it can be worked at the end of any row of the pattern. Any pattern row has the exact multiple that you will need to work the edging, which is great for modification. 
Okay, so not only is the shawl pattern a super easy one row repeat, but the edging pattern is also a super simple one row repeat. Uh, so we're gonna start by working our first repeat of it in this chain three space, and it starts with a slip stitch, chain three, double crochet, chain three pico, which is chain three, and single crochet in that third chain from your hook. I like to pick up a loop in the double crochet as well. I feel like it makes it a little sturdier than chain three and slip stitch all in that chain three space. That's how we're going to work the pattern repeat in all of the chain three spaces across, which is in the beginning, in the middle, and at the end. The rest of the repeats are worked over the three double crochet sections. So we will chain one, then slip stitch in the next double crochet, chain three, double crochet in the next double crochet, chain three pico, chain three, slip stitch in the next chain three, uh, slip stitch in the next double crochet, chain one and skip the next chain one space. And we're going to repeat that all the way across. So it's slip stitch in the next double crochet, chain three, double crochet in the next double crochet, chain three pico, chain three, and slip stitch in the next double crochet, chain one and skip the next chain one space. And you wanna repeat this all the way across making sure that you work that repeat across three double crochets and then also work it into the chain three spaces across. I'm hosting a live crochet along every Tuesday for the entire summer, donating the proceeds from this pattern to charity to support survivors of domestic violence and then making the shawl as we all talk amongst each other in the crochet along. It's been a lot of fun and I'd love for you to join me. If you enjoyed this video, please like, follow, and share, and subscribe to my channel for more videos. You can find a link in the video description to download this pattern, as well as where to find the weekly live crochet along. I hope you enjoyed this video. Everything I talked about can be found in the video description below. Let us make time to create, share, and inspire today and every day. I'll see you in the next video.